Oh, go home, he's fabulous porn. Shop, pop, 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 pop. Back to our friend, Mr. Bent Knife. Here's my edge guide, Amber has. The other move is going to be down here on my thigh with the stabby stab crossover, stabby stab crossover. I'm doing those kind of outer flicks like that. I can do the end like this. An important note is you'll see me putting my fingers inside all the time. That's that's to act as calipers to measure the depth. You'll see me alternating between carving across the grain and carving along with the grain. That just seems to work out. These two halves are carved out. Boom, boom. Another demonstration of gluing. Witness my bead game. Don't be jealous. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this, the other piece, slam it on the top gently, smush it around. I see the bead make it all the way. I'm going to not even open it up. Just going to smear the glue into the crack. This caution tape should help. Okay, looking inside, you can see it's beaded in the center, which means that I got some tension on the center to push the sides in. A little paintbrush, I can just go inside. Ta da! You see some rough stuff in here. I have a friend Michael from a Bavarian tradition of carving, woodworking, and uh, he has a traditional family mask style. Goes with his region in Bavaria. And something interesting he said about it is that if you don't carve it beneath a certain, below a certain thickness, it won't talk. By which I guess he meant resonate. literally meant it wouldn't work for the actor wearing the mask and that it wouldn't project their voice. I think that's very interesting detail. It may in fact pertain to hornbell thickness as well. Here's a piece of veneer. This is going to be a stabilizer on the small horn project 
between the down pipe and the lead pipe. I got to this point and then unwrapped it and discovered, so, you know, just pretend how awesome that was. <laughs> okay, well, do it on camera. Here is me squishing this around. The trick seems to be getting it all to sit flat. So there's my thumb on the corner pushing it down. Here's me adjusting it to line up. And then this tricky little crossover where you want to keep all the bits as flat as possible on the surface. that way. There we go. Not releasing my tension. And good luck to us all. Here are these two pieces there virtually hollowed out. Now I'm doing the transition carving uh, of these two surfaces to uh, match them up as best I can. Tools. We are back. Now moved locations. I'm carving here with the one and only Sharon Callis at her actual domicile <laughs> at this table. The Bell Project is uh, of the small Fuhorn Project is effectively carved out. I don't know if you can see how thin those walls are. Mm, pretty. And here's the pipe leading up to it. It's looking pretty good. I threw a coat of varnish on the outside to uh, help keep my fingerprints off it while it's getting handled for the rebuild. One-handed filming. <laughs> We're making culture here. <laughs> and here it is. Those of you keeping track, this is the second try on this binding. A very narrow, very skinny bit. And that looks like something I can work with. Here's the connector piece, a little bit of red paint on the inside, help with the smoothness. And here's our project, uh, clamped to the side of this desk drawer to stand up in place. I've got the angle, uh, appears to be correct to stand on its own. So there it is, I'm gonna just glue that. Okay, we're back. I'm tempted to carve a window into here, as is my want. In the meantime, now that that piece is more or less set, I can cut this here where I want to, get rid of the S-curve, 
and then attach the mouthpiece. The carrier or mouthpiece that's going to fit over over top of this guy of this guy. Here's an important step in fitting that I do quite often. It's a piece of red crayon, and I'm going to mark up the end of this piece where it crosses over. There's the horn, there's the orientation, in it slides. Don't move it around much, but I wanted to make good contact with the red crayon that's there on the end of the stem. And then I pull it out, and I look inside of it under very strong light, I can see the red transfer. Uh, about a centimeter crossover. Blue, 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 blue. Orientation. Line it up. Check it. Boop. Adjust it. in without cracking the seam. Now it's very tempting to glue on the bell now because in an hour I could be I could be sound testing it. Uh, maybe. Some red paint around uh, the secondary glue seal on the window on the inside. Might as well speed that up. Here's my setup, familiar now, I think, for gluing a standing piece. See if I can do it all while sucking it in my belly. Look, it's me and Jamie, safely distanced here at McLean Park. As, as, as close as I can come. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Yeah. I want to plug Jamie right now. I got this horn ready to honk, and I want you to be the witness of the first sounds from it, okay? Where am I at this horn? Uh, where are you? There you are. I'm hidden by the horn. Uh, <laughs> the horn is in the way, David. <laughs> Keep you out of it. Hold on, I got to honk this thing. All right, there we go. <laughs> Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's the it's the coming back horn. We're coming back, people. We're coming back. And there was hope in that month. Yes, there was. Ogle hunky, stabulous horn. Sha pa 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 pa.